good day. In this video, I'm going to show how to use OpenStreetMap with uh, QGIS and specifically for the city of Baguio. Recently, I've been working on a document which is from the uh, tourism office, and this is the document here. Um, there's a link on the OSM. Uh, Microsoft Drive I've shared with people um, who should have access to it and the directory structure is the same as here it's just a uh, synchronization so if you go into the OSM directory layers Baguio tourism office you find here this file city tourism inventory and if you open that file um, on my Firefox it opens like this, uh, you, you can zoom in and out a bit, if you like. Um, every link here is workable, so you can just press the control button, click on ID, and then it opens this here on the, on the map, on the internet. Um, but in this case I want to show how can you access this data in QGIS? So this table is very important. This table is basically, it tells you how it is tagged in a way that you can search for it. So there's also a lot of other tags, but these are the important ones. So if you want to look for a plug, the plug of the Philippine Commission first session in Baguio, then you see you can search for historic memorial and then memorial it's a plug and you see if you search for this you get several hits not everything on the OpenStreetMap base is listed here this is just the list I've been working on as I came along then but there's a lot more there but let's go for historic memorial and the memorial is further specified as a plug um, so what can you do here in QGIS? Well, first of all, you have the OpenStreetMap itself. This is online, so this is not local. You can store it local, but this is basically just an online map of the OpenStreetMap. And then, if you go again on my OneDrive, again, which is shared only with the people who should have access to it, you go in OSM, then you go in the subdirectory Applications, then you go to the subdirectory or folder Mapperative. And under Mapperative you have tiles which are generated with it. And here you have another map, this is Baguio No Label. You can download that. And then you suddenly see the difference. So this is still OpenStreetMap. If, if I do it like this, you still see it OpenStreetMap. Um, the online map does not have here the greenery around Dominican Hill. I only recently updated that, so it's not yet there, but here on my local copy it's there. Um, this is basically the same OpenStreetMap map, except I filtered out all the houses, all the buildings, and all the labels, all the names. So this is basically an empty map, just with the streets and with the zones. Uh, there's another map, this one here. It's actually basically the same, except here I also removed the zones. So this is really an empty map with just the roads. So if you want to visualize stuff in QGIS, this is very important that you um, don't just use here the basic OpenStreetMap because there's a lot of stuff here which you may not want to see. It might be confusing or you might overlook stuff and then you don't see it very clearly. So you can then in that case say, well, the zones, that's enough, or I even want to filter out more, just the roads. Okay, so how can you get data? Um, again, we go back here, remember, historic memorial and memorial plug. So what you can do here, under vector, there is a plugin, it's called Quick OSM. If you haven't installed it yet, just next to it, you can here go to manage and install plugins, uh, very simple, you just type in quick OSM, then, uh, wait, you have to select all, then you can see it here, and you can 
insole it. It's already insoled on my PC, so I don't have the insole button anymore. But usually there would be an insole button here. Anyway, once it's installed, you go to the quick OSM, you click here. And this is a quick query. It's a bit limited. It's good for easy tasks, but it's a bit limited. Here are presets, which I also share on the OSM drive. I'll get to that in another point. First is the importance, how does this here work? The query, the overpass query. Um, well, you can, you can type it all. Um, I came to, to the point where I just copy past it. I have a format here which you can just copy past and here this is your basic information this is always the same for Baggio so then is the question what do you want to do well in our case we want notes so we say that we want the note and then we open the brackets here and then we have a key and the value so the, the key would be historic I want to show this again historic memorial and the memorial we can further specify again as key memorial and then the value plug so that's exactly what you do here you type in historic memorial and then you do it again then you say I want from the memorials I don't want them all, I just want memorial and then the plug. You can actually even go for another one. If you are looking for a specific name, you can open it again and then you can do this again and then you say name and then whatever name you're looking for and then you got a single hit exactly for that name. We're not going to do that here. Instead, we are looking for a node which any node inside the geocoded area Baggio within the car and this node should then actually be looking inside that area so we're opening other brackets here which this is just syntax and then you say area area zero um, because what we did here the definition of this geocoded area and its boundaries we put that here in a variable called area that area is an area so what we're doing is the variable area and then the name of area and then we get the output in geo information and then we just say run the query now it's looking inside Baggio uh, we got here a layer has been loaded uh, so you can close this, then we go back here and now you actually see here these dots so all of these dots are actually plugs and in this case what did we want to see? oh the plug of the Philippine Commission first session in Baguio, that's this one here so the one you're looking at here I'm not sure if you can see my pointer that's the plug, so what you can do now is um, you can go to properties here and then you say well I want a red dot you can actually specify that manually you can also have your own symbols here so these are just standard symbols but let's say we want the red one this one and if that's not big enough for you you can even explode it as much as you want I mean now it's really big right but I usually go for two that's quite okay and uh, especially when you zoom in and then to recognize it even further you can actually add labels uh, this is the Tagalog name but let's say we just want the English name now you get the, the uh, English names here so here you see Philippine Commission's first session in Baguio there's actually other labels um, for example what about the text right well the text is in the inscription text uh, let's say um, I want more labels so I have the name here but I also want the uh, the oops wrong button click the 
OSM ID, for example, that's a nice one. So, okay. Then we add that. We just click apply. Now you see we got the OSM ID here, which is basically the numbers you see here. So all these IDs from Jeep lines, the stop, um, Jeep stops, um, I just got the ID in the same manner I got it here. Now you got one is here, the other one is here. So this is a bit confusing, right? Um, I'm going to show you another trick here. You can actually double click on it. And then you say, I want the placement. I do not want the cartographic. I want it with an offset. And the number, I want to position it below. And let's say I want that one 10 below. And then the name itself, let's put it also below. So we also do the offset and below, and we want that one five below, okay? If you now click apply, now you get them beautiful, what, uh, a top comes the name, then comes the number, and you can add here many more labels actually. So any, really anything you want, you can even get here the address data um, you can get tourist information, the artwork type, um, wiki da data, uh, the material, the support, so the support is, is it on a wall, is it on a, on a pole or anything, all of that data, you can actually retrieve it here. Um, street address, the corner, uh, what is the height of it. Yeah, well, I'm not going to get deeper into that, otherwise the... the uh, the video will be too long, but this is basically the, the simple information. How do I work with QGIFs and how do I retrieve information? And you can apply that basically to everything here. You can just query anything with this example I did here. Except here you use that, for example, land, land use is military or um, for the town hall, you would say, if you go up, you see it's an amenity. You can say amenity town hall. Um, there is something else which is not written here. If I look for town halls, I don't just get the city hall. I actually get all the barangay halls as well, because they are also town halls. Except for the difference that the city town hall has a type which is city and the barangay town hall has a type which is barangay so that's the only difference um, but anyway let's click this out now you have this over the general open street map as you can see the, the red dots are not so easy to spot anymore uh, you can also deselect it and you just have the, the, the plugs themselves this is then with the zones, and this is then just with the streets. Uh, let's remove this for a second. Uh, now I want to show the benefit of using these presets. So the, the nice thing of a preset is the city, any city office can make a preset or ask me to do it. I made here a preset specifically for Baguio tourism. Um, let's just run that. Because a preset is basically the same as what I just did, except it's a lot more complicated. There's a lot more rules to it. And uh, you pull out a lot of information all at once, and then you visualize it on the map. Uh, so let this run for a moment. As you can see here, it's loading the hotels, the motels, hostels, apartment, guest houses. Well, guest houses and apartments. I'm not even sure myself if I'm saying this right, but a lot of mappers, they mapped in the past uh, transients, and some transients are actually mapped as apartments, and others are mapped as guest houses. So that's also why I gave them both the same color here, uh, because they are basically the same. Uh, this is if it's mapped as an area. This is, is if it's mapped as a node. So you also see the same here on the map. Once it's completed with the whole preset, I will show you. You can actually already see here on the right side, these are transient here, these little orange areas. Uh, but this is also transient. And these two here are also transients. And the difference is 
here the polygon has been made. So if someone sees on the satellite imagery, there's the edge of the house, here is the edge, here is the edge, here is the edge, then they marked a polygon on the map and then the polygon itself got the value of um, either apartment or guest house and some other place someone that's usually how I work I usually map the building itself and if inside that building there's an amenity I actually just put a note there inside the building that there's an amenity uh, this is actually the um, the convention rule today today we do it like that every object gets a single entry in the OpenStreetMap database so yes the old ways and it's not invalid actually the old ways are you can just map a building which is an object inside that object there can be other objects and you can add that to the polygon of the building so that's what you get on here um, that you have an area defined as a transient um, the modern way of do things is one entry in the OpenStreetMap, one OSM ID for one object, which then means the building is an object, whatever is in the building is an object, or multiple objects, and all of them get a single, simply set a single node for that, or OSM ID. Um, yeah, we can close this now. So now you can actually see here, this is then the... the Burnham Park uh, with the Rose Garden, the Ibeloy Park, the playground. Here you see the the um, golf courses. The Baguio Country Club is here. Uh, you can zoom out and you see a bit more. So these are all transients and welcome signs, hotels. Um, here in the list you can actually see what we have. The red one is the Baguio City. Um, boundary according to the assessor office that's the data i'm using uh, funnily just recently um, google copied that from us from openstreetmap they are allowed to do that google is allowed to copy we are not allowed to copy from google but google is allowed to do anything that's not just sarcastic that's really the case that's just how the licensing works that's why we work with OpenStreetMap. So Google, Grab, commercial companies, they can all use this information. So that's the beauty of the city if they share the data with OpenStreetMap. You share it also for the commercial interest of the city with the companies, which boosts their profit, it reduces their time, it makes it easier for everyone. And the beautiful thing if you work with OpenStreetMap is it distributes among many, many maps. So Baidu from China uses OpenStreetMap, Apple uses OpenStreetMap, TomTom uses OpenStreetMap, even Google, they copy from OpenStreetMap. Um, that's why it's the great thing to work with OpenStreetMap. You're really doing it for everyone, you know. Uh, if, if you work with Google, you cannot access the data like that. You cannot query the APIs like this. Uh, you have no direct access to the database. And anything you do there, you cannot share it with anyone because Google is closed. They don't allow you to use their data for any other mapping activities or for any other companies. Grab wouldn't be able to uh, use it. Uh, anyway, as you can see here, you have the picnic tables, park, uh, playgrounds, viewpoints. Uh, you can basically select here, hide all layers. Uh, you say, I just want to see the viewpoints. There we have Mines View Park Deck, Good Shepherd uh, Convent View Deck, uh, the view deck of the SM. As you can see, there are some view decks here, they don't have a word, a name actually. Um, happens, there's still a lot of information missing on OpenStreetMap. Um, yeah, we're only three people actively mapping here in Baguio, so it's a lot of work for three people, obviously. And that's where the city comes in, if the city helps, it's going a lot faster. <laughs> but um, anyway, yeah, you can, uh, here you can now switch on the OpenStreetMap. Now you see here the Skywalk, the SM uh, Baguio balcony. Um, these few decks, uh, you can also again disable this and use the map I pre-compiled for the city so that one has no names so you can easily read everything. Um, yeah, the, the city boundary is maybe comfortable to keep that active actually. 
So here you always can see what's actually the official city boundary and what not. Or what I showed you before, this is done with the roads, so that makes it even more viewable for everyone. Uh, yeah, well, fitness centers, obelisk, yeah, we, we actually have that too here. The zone monument is an obelisk. So we actually have that on a few other points. The, the veterans uh, park has also an obelisk, a little one. I didn't map that yet. I actually put a fix me note there, so I kind of forgot to do that. It, there's so much still to do. But anyway, I hope you get the grasp now how to work with QGIS, how to work with the presets, how you can actually make queries yourself, how you can access through the overpass API, how you can access the database of OpenStreetMap, and how you can filter for specific information, how you can say uh, horse riding here, I want to switch it on, I want uh, bowling in the city, uh, picnic sites here, I want to view them. So this is how you enable, disable that. And uh, I'm going to cut short the video here, we're over 20 minutes, so that's more than enough. And um, if there's any questions, just, uh, just contact me, you know, you, you all have my uh, WhatsApp, so just let me know. I'm all, also happy to come by to the office, and uh, next week I'll return to Baguio. I'm here for another seven days, then I'll return, so any questions there are, just uh, shoot them at me, I'm always happy to help. Uh, that's it. Over and out.